Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome. This talk will be about elastic search on Rails. Uh, I'm the author of the entire library for elastic search in Ruby, which you may, some of you may know. There are like bad news and good news about this library. The bad news is it's not feature complete. It doesn't expose all the power Elasticsearch has, all the queries or whatever other features. But the good news, it's fairly easy to integrate into Rails applications, uh, which are primarily active model or active record base. If you don't know Tire, wanna like see what's it, it's github slash karma slash Tire. And uh, this is the Ruby DSL to work with searches. And for the Rails integration, it has a fairly nice thing. If I find it, it's invisible here. You can generate a fully working Rails application with a Rails template, uh, which is doable uh, in lighting talk under five minutes. So that's cool. We can do that here. We can run the script. You can see it, uh, it's a basic Rails template, and it detects if you run or not Elasticsearch on your machine. The good thing is, if you don't run Elasticsearch on your machine, just press Y for yes, and it will download and launch Elasticsearch for you. So there's nothing to install. You don't have to look up any other instructions, etc. While it's downloading, uh, you can see the, uh, the template. It's a fairly complex Ruby script, but we'll go through the steps and see what it's doing. Basically, this is what you'll do if you'll want to integrate Elasticsearch in your app. And then the hard work starts, you know, like uh, making sure the mapping is proper and stuff like that. So you can see Elasticsearch was installed. A uh, fairly old version right now. And uh, you add tire and will paginate to the gem file because we are using will paginate for import. We're running bundle install, which usually takes a long time, but it gets better with new releases. And we generate a fairly simple application an article, uh, articles controller, a couple of views, that's it. The script puts every step in a separate git commit. So you end up with a git repository, which you can inspect like what are the steps, like what this thing done, has done. It not leaves you with a big ball of mass of some code you don't understand. So if it's done, it runs the application on the default uh, 3000 port. And this is the application. It's a fairly normal Ruby scaffolded thing. Uh, let's see if the search runs. Yeah, it does. It's, uh, it's working. Uh, you can see you can use the search results like normally in the roots. That's, uh, that's a good thing. So let's have a look what it, uh, what it did, OK? When we switch to the generated, uh, it's, sorry. It's a fairly, fairly normal Rails application, of course. Uh, these are the steps uh, which it went through. Let's let's see what all the did. Like clean application is a Rails application without anything anything else. Let's scale it and try to reload it. Yeah. So to the gem file, we just add the gem, add will paginate. It's used for the importing. You add the article resource, which is fairly normal Rails code, the, the classic thing. And we add a seeding script for the database, because in Rails you can like see the application development, so it's not a blank thing. Uh, then that, this is the point where you integrate your model with Elasticsearch. You've got two lines. The first line means, OK, augment this model, enhance this model with the Elasticsearch features, or tie features. 
And the second line says, okay, uh, perform callbacks. So whenever a model is created or updated, it updates the information. In Elasticsearch, whenever it's deleted, it's removed from the index. We also want uh, support for searching in the front end. So that's, that's the thing we just did. You know, We have an article search endpoint in the application, which is, again, fairly standard rail stuff. So we add a method called search. And in the parameters, we got a queue parameter for the query. And we just pass that query without any, any sort of fuss down to Elasticsearch. We create a form. Uh, we add it to the root files so Rails can actually perform this method over, over HTTP. And that's it. Why the data already was in there uh, when we loaded the application? You saw the seeding script. Uh, uh, which was executed here. And you can see that we launched this rake task. So you say you execute rake environment to load the application, tire import class article force through, and that's it. Uh, everything is there. It uses fill paginate for large data structures. And this is the repository. So I don't know how much time I have. I haven't been keeping track. Uh, like three minutes. So, OK, as I said, it's just a start, obviously. But it's a great way how to start, uh, how to start with uh, Elasticsearch when you're a Rubyist. There is a free screencast from Ryan Bates on Elasticsearch, which I highly recommend if you're interested in the thing to check out. There are some, uh, some uh, important things in comments, because I corrected some of those, uh, some of the episodes, so be sure to check this code. And if we have two minutes right now, we can as well check one of the comments, I guess, because uh, uh, that's important what you do. In the, in the Ryan Bates version, he had a separate methods for outer name and comments count, and then use that on that line. That's not the good way how to do that. You can actually include the association in the two JSON, you know, and then it's fairly easy to uh, to search for comments for an article or such a thing. So. I won't prolong it any longer, so if there are questions, this is fairly basic stuff. If there are any questions, please just ask me. Sorry? Okay. So thank you.